room and super ordinary for B Saf. I'm your man Saint Johnny from Fields Club and I've got with me Ms. Lisa Kelly the Moon Gallery. Howdy. How you going, man? Yeah, good. Good? Okay. Lovely. We're an hour behind, so we're gonna push <laughs> no, I'm kidding, there's no time limit. Um That's okay. So um you are painting that we actually doing we cut to it just after my last interview, the massive freaking dragon. Yeah, that's mine. What? How do you have the patience, the scales? Is that not driving you insane? It was actually really meditative. It felt really um, nice. I feel like that's the fun part, is when it's like all laid out and it's all ready to go and then you just have to do something mindless. Like the scales, you know? We are very different people. That's where <laughs> I'd be like, well, it looks like you're getting block coloured. <laughs> okay, so the scales, the, the scale of the work, actually, is that something that you're used to doing, something so big? Yeah, well, I've actually just um, sort of, like, done my biggest wall a couple of months ago, and it was on brick, so it was, like, a real learning experience, and I think it was about, um, like, maybe 15 metres long and, like, 4 metres high, and I think because I did that on so much nervous energy, it means doing something like this actually feels really fun. Really chill. Right, yeah, right. So... so Doing something on nervous energy though, good or bad? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm guessing there's peaks for sure, but how did that? How does that work um, out in your art? Yeah, really rough time. It like all worked out. Like it looked good. It was um like I was happy with it in the end, but yeah, definitely a lot of sleepless nights and right. Yeah, stressing on the wall, but like good nerves. You know where you're like, oh, like there's drive there. Right? I think those sort of nerves make sure that you're gonna do a good piece. If you go in too happy or too confident sometimes, you're not keen on the fine details. So it was your first time doing a brick wall, is that? Yeah, first time doing brick. What's the main difference here? For the viewers out there who might be looking for tips and tricks, mm -hmm. difference between solid wall, brick wall, what are the things you have to account for? Um, absolutely paint and how it soaks it up. And even if it's primed, because it was primed before, just how the grout level of deepness will just soak up the paint, shred your paint brushes, how it's gonna like warp the design as well. Like you can't do anything with clean lines. Um, and you'll see like with some of the guys who are um, doing like the stairway and stuff, you, you see them like they'll roll and then all of the gaps in the brick show up. So you have to get in with the brush and just like shove it in. So luckily I had helpers to... <laughs> <laughs> little, little helpers. Little slaves. With things like that, do you, if you know that's going to be a problem, do you quote for that time? Yeah, this was um, a council job, so it was kind of decided. Get the that cash was... money from the council. That's it, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it couldn't really. I mean, like, I explained to them how it might, like, take a little bit more time and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Does government cheddar taste better than private cheddar? Oh, yeah. You know, like... Well, I mean, I haven't had that look. I'm not that, you know, I've only been doing it for so long, so mm. I haven't really had that many, um, like, well-paid commercial things. Mm. So, so far, government cheddars, yeah. Government cheddar <laughs> makes a good cheese. Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, this is your first time... No, that was your first time painting brick, so you do a lot of that, but you have no formal training. You just stepped up and did big wall, let's go. Did you start small and then, like, pitch a big wall? How does that... Yeah, well, I actually got, um, like, I always wanted to do it. It's always been, like, a childhood dream and always, like, painted and drew. Well, childhood dream accomplished. Let's shut it down, everyone. Let's go. <laughs> it's it. done. It's over. My life's yeah. over. Yeah, <laughs> I'm done. Um, um, but, yeah, no, I, uh, there was actually a mentor program for BSAF two years ago, and it was run by um, Brightsiders and Emily Devers, who were, like, mentoring um, at Visible Inc. And, um, like, I knew some friends who knew Emily, and they were like, you should give this a go and like so they basically helped us apply for BSAF and then showed us how to scale up and that was yeah pretty great just to practice and like really empowering just to be like oh I can take something this big and blow it up and yeah yeah that always blows my mind everyone talks about like the tips and tricks of scaling up and like yeah, some people yeah. are saying even like the idea Leah our first person I interviewed yeah. using things like ribbons like to then put your text in, so then you have a scale area That's instead cool. of a big thing. Yeah, yeah, so didn't know that. Yeah. Like I can't. I the only thing I paint is tiny little like miniatures, like a big oh, fat really? nerd. So I could not imagine painting the side of a wall. That's how that is, is that nerdy? Because I paint <laughs> goblins and dragons. I love goblins and dragons. <laughs> You're a nerd, nah. <laughs> and we're on Twitch, and they're all nerds. We're all nerds. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, so no formal training, but you've always painted. 
Yeah, yeah. Or, and mostly draw. Dr- mostly draw? Mostly, mostly draws. Draw just draws. But probably could and other Duchess and Manchester and things. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so, uh, drawing. Yes. What, since you were a kid? Yeah. And that's yes. also where the name The Moon Gallery comes from? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it means nothing. But then also, like, you know, when I was little, had some little sticks in the backyard at Granny's place and pretended I owned a gallery and it was called that. So, that yeah. is so wholesome. <laughs> and we have, yeah, Aww. Lincoln's on the floor here <laughs> dropping in going, aww. <laughs> all right, so, chilling at Nan's, family, that's a big thing for you. Yeah. Your piece today you were saying earlier, the big East Asian dragon. Mm. Cross culture, how does that affect your art? Like, how does that change the way you've approached things? Is there anything particular that you've drawn from there? Yeah, I feel like, like definitely with this piece, because it's something for me, like lots of the mural stuff I've done is for other people or other styles or whatever. Um, So I've really wanted to just like explore folkloric symbols from um, my Vietnamese heritage. um, And just also all of these like tokenized sort of symbols of Asia, which are just use and like have different value depending on your own experience Mm. so it's something I've really wanted to do and like been really inspired by lots of other artists who kind of like sit on that I don't know like sit with that western experience as well as an eastern identity um yeah and just want really yeah yeah really like trying to find your own place in it or just how others interact with it or yeah find my own place with it and also just like um learning about that part of my ancestry through this exploration as well like lots of stories that I grew up with were western you know folk tales yeah I didn't really experience that um symbolism that comes through and the fables that yeah, yeah yeah so it's a whole different thing there yeah it's a whole different thing oh, right so is this like your first uh, approach on that or have you done this before in your other works like I've played around with different stuff um before but yeah yeah I think this is probably the first time I've like yeah cool really cool committed so when you don't have the artist hat on, what is it that you do? So my day job is an eating issues practitioner. So it's just like a counselor for yeah. eating, eating disorders. So that's something definitely close to your heart then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm a lived experience um, practitioner or healer as they, as they call it, but I'm really new to it as well. So okay. yeah, yeah, just been doing it for the past year or so. Indigo. Yeah. Would you say you like to use your art to help tie in with those, like, smart therapy experience, or you just keep that completely separate, or things that you experience in that part of your world, you bring into your art? Yeah, sometimes there's crossover. Sometimes through work there's crossover. Um, I think with, yeah, with my art, definitely explored, like, the interaction of mental health with art and how those the interplay of those two things and how art can be a really meditative and therapeutic process in itself. Um, I mean, sometimes it comes through in, in, in therapy and exercises, which is fun. I'm not like a trained art therapist or anything like that. I think it's just naturally a therapeutic Yeah. Thing. All right, cool. Yeah. Man, you are, you've got a lot of hats. You're a big, <laughs> big hat wearer. Um, so have you, you are clearly like to give back to the community. Do you do a lot of art, stuff like that, with the community? Do you like like community involvement? What's like... Yeah, yeah. So I was really lucky. Um, doing my postgrad last year, I did a really sick placement at Viz Inc, which is like a youth arts hub, um, sponsored, funded by the council. Um, and that was like a real, like community development sounds like the most boring thing ever. When I heard about it, I was like, that sounds so boring. Like just doing community development and then I learned about it and I was like this is amazing this is sick and it was like finally a chance for like that art and sort of I don't know psycho mental health kind of stuff to come together mm-hmm. so I did um, a couple of workshops um, with Ronald McDonald House with the families and, and kids there um, did some stuff with through like um, NGOs with eating disorders communities as well and then also did some stuff with um clarence street like a youth drugs and alcohol service so that's really cool seeing how like delivering a public art project can actually really empower communities and build skills for marginalized young people as well yeah. so yeah so throwing that to the uh, twitch chat like you have anyone in there looking for advice um with that did you find you got the first job and they all strung together or you just well like, i enjoy this and you started pitching strong ideas to people yeah um I don't know yeah it kind of came like I got I definitely got really lucky and it's just that I just would meet people through my day job and then 
or through my placement and then um, you know they would know that I was doing some stuff and so stuff would come to me but then also a lot of the time I'd hear about things and be like oh like I can help with that or I can like what about this idea and try and bring that in so a bit of bit of both yeah oh yeah right um we've we're running short on time we've got two minutes so I've got one more question yeah. when because we're talking to a lot of people about their studying experience and how if they didn't study art or if they did how that changed their art did you find your art took a back seat for a few years there while you were studying more on that, um, like, uh, counsellor mental health stuff? Yeah. Or did you use that as a vent at all during that time? Like, how did that... For people out there who were trying to figure out how to juggle, yeah, what's your yeah. advice? Or how did, how did you go about it, even if you're not going to drop advice? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I think, like, it definitely took a back seat just because I feel like I've, like, always run away from art and then always run back to it because um, I felt like I haven't had time and then... You know, it's just been a feeling where it's like whenever I feel like I'm really missing something or I'm really down, I'm like, oh, I probably actually haven't painted or done anything like creative in a while. So, yeah, definitely like a break from that stuff. And, um, yeah, just like a hustle that's actually really fun. So it's like... Got a hustle. Got a hustle. Got a hustle. (laughs) All right, then. Well, since we're running out of time, we have things to do. And you need to finish that damn painting so you can go home. Um, can I please get you to sign the wall? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for your time. It's yeah. really nice to hear artists who give back to community, not just in their art, like your work itself is like so inspiring. And I hope it shows people out on the stream who are trying to juggle life and work that, hey, you can do both and you can yeah. make a difference everywhere you go. So for sure. I hope no, you warmed that you definitely touched a few people's hearts. No, Thanks. Yeah, I can't open this one. <laughs> Thanks. No, that's really nice. Oh, but... thank them. You're the one. You helped them. Oh, I... <laughs> don't think I've helped anyone today. No, but you've never helped you. anyone. That's actually what we're here it's for. It's an lot. intervention. You're up yeah. for review Andy, at work. Andy, um, Dawson, right. Andy Dawson says the dragon looks amazing. Oh, thanks. Everyone's been saying that. This spot right, right here. There? Yep. Oh, sorry, You've been commissioned. Don't You've worry. Been ordered, you guys. COVID safe. I can watch from over here. Yeah, are you COVID safe though? Because, I mean, you were having some lozenges before. Uh, that's from talking. That's just wear and tear on the tools. Yeah, alright, alright. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm so Whatever. COVID safe. I'm always wearing protection, whether I need it or not. <laughs> what protection is currently on at the moment? Well, that's that's for myself to know. This is a this is, this is a PG <laughs> chat. Well, I'm done. Let's have our next person. Thank you very much, Moon <laughs> Thank Gallery. You. Wah, nice, bang.